Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I'm excited about a guest today. Been blessed to have so many friends on here, but this friend actually I may have known longer than any guest that we've had. Uh, we actually went to high school together just a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Last 83, Takes Creek High School. And uh, Denise Walsh is with us, and she's going to be a tremendous guest because, one, she's got a great story about her journey of faith, but she's also an entrepreneur. And I know a lot of friends that want to be entrepreneurs and just, you know, don't know whether to step out in faith. And uh, you're going to get to hear a little bit about how God has uh, helped her as an entrepreneur. She is the owner of Gluten-Free Miracles over off Nicholasville Road. And what is the name of the road close to it, Denise? Burt Road. Burt Road. And uh, Jeff's Car Wash, your buddy pretty much knows where Jeff's Car Wash is. It is directly behind that. So uh, gluten-free miracles, I know it's a topic that a lot of people uh, struggle with gluten, including yours truly. So we're going to be hearing about that in the days to come, how God helped her start that business as an entrepreneur. And I know a lot of people are interested in that. But uh, we just want to hear about her journey of faith. And, you know, Denise, you're a business owner and you work hard and God has blessed you. Yet, uh, you know, you didn't grow up uh, going to church every Sunday, did you? No, I didn't know Jesus, and I definitely did not grow up in the church. My family um, was, um, you know, one of those families that was from every different uh, look. And um, the only person in my entire family that went to church was my grandmother. But God did place your grandmother, and uh, Mm -hmm. she definitely had some spiritual influence on you, didn't she? Yeah, she was a rock in my family, and, um, you know, she was just a very educated woman and had a strong faith. But again, I didn't go to church uh, until I was out of school and actually in my early 30s, so... It's well, been a while, cool. yeah, but, you know, it's it just shows you how God can take and, and change us. You know, I didn't know Bible verses and Bible stories growing up much, you know, because although my grandmother had a faith, I don't know why, she just didn't really share it that much with us at the time. Well, to all those grandparents out there listening, uh, man, just realize that seeds you're planting with your grandchildren are not going uh, in vain. And I know a lot of times they resist it, as Mm -hmm. young people like to do, but uh, those seeds will be harvested. God's always said Mm -hmm. his return will not return void. And as you'll hear over the next couple of days, you're going to hear how God worked through the Mm -hmm. grandmother's planting of those seeds. But, you know, Denise uh, went to high school, huge high school, over 600 graduating class. So we knew of each other. But, uh, you know, uh, the Denise I saw at school had a smiley face and was really friendly and things. But, uh, man, things were a little bit tougher at home, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, people don't know what's going on behind closed doors in many families. And uh, I had a single mother without an education. She had quit school in ninth grade, and I had a a half-brother and sister. I did not ever know my father. And my mom uh, just worked really hard, you know, you know, like as a hostess here and there and waiting tables, you know, like you see people do. And we lived in the projects and uh, it was it was pretty tough. There were times that uh, we didn't have much food or any food. I remember at one point um, after my brother and sister had left, my mom had lost her job and we had to live off peanut butter and crackers for a month and we had to ration those. So that was pretty tough. You know, um, when I was at school, I wouldn't even go to the cafeteria you know because i didn't want to smell the food so wow and you know i just think it's a great reminder as you just shared denise that people you know they may be smiling on the outside but everybody's dealing with something and uh you know i just want to encourage our listeners if you're a follower of jesus you know man be sensitive to the holy spirit's promptings um i remember i shared a story several months ago on this program Denise where uh, when I had my grocery store in Cynthia being a former entrepreneur and the Holy Spirit told me to give this uh, mom a gift card mm-hmm. and I thought well I don't want to embarrass her and uh, but I went back on up to my office kind of ignored it but it just became the prompting so strong that I finally just said okay so I wrote out a $50 gift card and took it to her and she didn't know I just said ma'am uh, just God wanted me to bless you and I gave it to her well um, when she left uh, I happened to see her leaving the store that she bought her groceries and she just waved said thank you. Well, uh, unbelievably, about 20 years later, I'm at a breakfast, the governor's breakfast, and her son winds up that he is the executive assistant to the governor. 
and came out of this tough background. He, I'll go up afterwards. We start talking. He said, I got to tell you a story. I said, what's that? He said, well, you remember you gave us a gift card many, many years ago and I kind of, it took me a while. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, you didn't know this, but we only had like two cans of corn in our cupboard at home at the time. That's awesome. But I would have never known because mm -hmm. on the outside, you mm -hmm. know, they didn't look like they were shrugging. They, you know, I'm sure like all of us uh, had to have right. a little pride. You didn't want people to know, did you? Oh, no. I mean, I wasn't exactly popular in school. We couldn't afford Nikes or name brand clothes. And I just kind of kept to myself anyway. I was nice, you know, and I didn't have a bad attitude or anything, I don't think anyway. But um, I wasn't somebody that even, you know, you would have talked too much. You know, I was shocked that you even knew who I was or remembered who I was when you came into my store. Um, but yeah, I certainly didn't go around telling people, hey, you got any food? I don't have much to eat at home. You just don't do that. And there weren't resources then, or if there were, we didn't know about them that there are now in the school systems. Yeah, we were. This was like eighty to eighty three back when we were in high right. school. So yeah, it was it was a different day, and there weren't uh, computer access, the internet right. things like there are now. So, all right, well, you. Uh, thing i love you know i think god has a sense of humor here now you have this wonderful healthy <laughs> business gluten-free yeah. miracles here in lexington kentucky yet you said man i got to step up and help take care of my family and yeah. uh, tell about your first full-time job and okay so y'all don't judge me but my first job was at white castle and it was a great fit because i got to get food and i was hungry and also um it helped provide you know i got to help my mom with the bills and you know I, that way i had money to buy school clothes and food so i worked full-time my senior year and uh just helped out you know making sure that we had what we needed and that was how i got into uh the workforce anyway was through white castle so whoever would have thought i would have the healthy bakery and cafe starting out at white castle but um uh, it all works out you know god does have a sense of humor greg <laughs> yeah, he really does i love it I, when you told, were telling me that when we were you know preparing for mm -hmm. this uh, these programs i thought no way but here you were a senior in high school i think you told me you left at one o'clock and yes. you know, had enough cre credits graduating you worked full-time at white castles so um yeah i think the thing that i want to convene to people the next few days as you listen is that you know denise is an entrepreneur and you know god's blessed her but like all of us she's gone through a lot of trials and heartache yes. and disappointments uh, had a you know challenging upbringing but she didn't use that as an excuse or to be angry at god and so uh all right so you get out of high school you've got some food experience uh did you continue to stay in the food business or what what, what happened next for you well, you know, I think life is just an, an ongoing process. And so, um, no, I, did, I got out of the food business for quite a while. And I actually went to school to be uh, a hairdresser, and I didn't like doing that. And uh, then I went back and, and started working in restaurants and worked my way up into management. And that's how I got back into the food business. So, you know, that worked out. And I went to Nashville and worked there for a few years doing the food business as a manager. And it was just the, the company I was working for, I worked 80 something hours a week. So it just there was no time to sleep, much less have a life. So it didn't feel like a good place for me. And to make a long story short, I met the right people and got put in the right position. And I opened a casting company in Nashville. It was called Pure Talent Casting. And then through that process, I ended up being a producer and making a lot of music videos and commercials for a company out of Hollywood. And that was great. And then I felt like the reason they had used me was for my connections in the music industry. And so when they'd used that all up, they let me go. At the same time, I broke up with uh, my boyfriend and things were pretty dark. Yeah. And so um, up until this point, I had never really thought about Jesus much or, or having a relationship with Christ or going to church and um, it's crazy how I was just kind of hitting rock bottom and I get a call out of the blue from a director I really didn't know who asked me to go on a long project with him in California as his producer and it was for a Christian label called Word Records and for three sets of Christian artists and it was a long project. We were there for like a month following them around from church to church and, and shooting uh, their concerts. And through the process, I kept thinking, what have they got? What have all these people got that are in this venue that I don't have? Because it was obviously had something, and I wanted it. But I didn't know what it was or how to get it. <laughs> and so 
Um, so, so what you're saying is, you know, people are always watching, and you don't yeah. have to necessarily carry your Bible around mm-hmm. or quote Bible verses. People can just notice a difference if you're in yeah. a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, you know, the Bible tells us that um, we are radiant in Christ and that our faces should never be covered in shame. And I think that you see that radiance among Christians and among you know, people who have a pure spirit. And I think I saw a lot of that throughout that process. And so one night, um, I still was just really down and feeling unworthy. And I think that's the big problem. You start noticing that there's a better way, but then you feel unworthy of that way. Mm. And you have to go back to how I was brought up as well. And so, you know, dirt poor, no dad, you know. And I just didn't feel like I was worthy of whatever they had. And um, so one night... I went to, I was in Santa Ana, California, and I went back to my room in the embassy suites, and I was just really miserable. And uh, I was actually contemplating suicide. You got that hopeless. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I was working. I mean, as soon as I got fired from my job, a director called me and, and offered me a position, you know. So it wasn't that, but I just felt so lost. I mean, you're in California, though. Right. You're working with this great company, you know, mm-hmm. doing Christian videos. You're in the embassy suites, for crying out loud. But still, yeah. things can look good on the outside. But if we're hurting on the inside, yes. it just doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, I just felt completely lost. And um, and it felt just like there was no point. What was the point of anything? And so I... Um, the night, that night, I cried myself to sleep, and I, I guess I said one of my first prayers, and I just said, Jesus, if you're real, I need you to reveal yourself to me, and I cried myself to sleep, and then the next morning, I got up and took my shower, and I'm standing looking in my dressing mirror, and um, this might be hard for some of you people to, to believe, but I looked it up, and I saw Jesus sitting on my bed with his arms stretched out to me. And as I turned around, the room completely filled with light. And the presence of God was so powerful that I was down on the ground before I even knew it, weeping and worshiping. And he, he, he said, I'm here for you. And that was it. I looked up, and he was gone. But it was so powerful, I knew. I knew that it was real. And um, it was just the most magical experience, you know. And then... You know, I often wonder how we know something's real and we didn't imagine it or if a vision is real. And I feel God affirms it. And so the director comes to my room, says, are you ready to go? And we go to the post-production house. And then he goes, I have a place I want to go and check out for possible location. And it's uh, out in the desert. So we drove out, and it was a place called Love Mountain. And there was this older artist man that had built this, like, adobe-style mountain from hand, his hands out in the middle of the desert with donations. And every part of the mountain he had scriptures and images painted on it. It was and had a huge cross that had been put in the center. And so we get there, and the director I'm working with goes and starts just taking all these photos and goes off by himself. And I walk over towards the, this mountain, Love Mountain, and the, the little old man comes from behind his truck and says, well, it's about time. And I said, excuse me. And he goes, I've been waiting for you. And I was just like, oh, okay. And so we start walking up this mountain. All right. I want you to hold at that point right there because there's some great stuff that this man did. And, you know, you told me you learned Bible verses for the first yeah. time, but I want people to hear this story. So if you just tuned in, we're talking with Denise Wall. She is the owner of Gluten-Free Miracles, went from her first full-time job at White Castles to owning a wonderful, healthy place to go eat, Gluten-Free Miracles, over off Nicholasville Road behind Jeff's Car Wash. You can't miss it. Uh, just a great place. Uh, a lot of people struggle with celiac, and we're going to tell more about that, but we're talking about her journey of faith, but that's going to be all the time we have for today but tune in tomorrow as she continues this powerful journey of faith and how god gave her the vision to start gluten-free miracles i'm greg horn and this is hope is here cmi is your full service human resources provider in central kentucky for 15 years cmi human resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position no job is too large or too small for cmi contact the professionals today at cmi human resources 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com